Good morning. This is the recording for Friday, October 7th regarding Reconstruction Era. If you have me during Titan time today, we are going to just be working on your makeup work or unit three cash courses independently, unless you'd like to sit at the table by my desk, in which case so we can work together and collaborate to find the answers for these. Today we'll be discussing the Reconstruction Era, which took place between 1865 and 1877. First, I want to want you to complete the 10-7 Radical Republicans warm up on Canvas. The questions review um, yesterday's material, and these are test questions regarding the Emancipation Proclamation, details of the military, and effects on the Southern economy. I hope that you will take the time to look at those and ask any questions that you need. Today we will discuss the warm-up, Pear Deck slides, you will write an essay for me, and you will complete an exit ticket. The essential question is, why was the Radical Republicans' plan considered radical? Reconstruction is the program put into place by the federal government to repair damage to the South and restore the Southern states to the Union. Simply speaking, it's putting the pieces of the puzzle back together. We're going to ask you to come up with a plan for reconstruction. And these are the questions that people have in mind as they're trying to come up with said plan. How will Southern states rejoin the Union? What will the process be? How will the Southern economy be rebuilt? What rights will African-American people have? Who will pay for damages? Who will pay for medical expenses? How will the economy handle 4 million new workers? How will African-American people be educated? How will Confederate soldiers be punished? How will Confederate leaders be punished? How will Southern states rejoin the government? How will slave owners be addressed? How will we make sure that this won't happen again? So all of those things are in people's mind as they try to create a plan for readmitting states to the union and what that process will look like. So I want you to like, have those questions in mind and write five key points that you believe a reconstruction plan should include, including economic concerns, political concerns, and moral concerns, and come up with a name for your plan. First, try to think of as many as you can individually for about three minutes. Then you can work with your groups for another two minutes to fill in any blanks or change your answers. And then we will review it all together, what your ideas are. So this is an opinion question. This is your idea, how you think this process should look like. <clears throat> Lincoln has been working on these questions since 1863 in the middle of the war. Lincoln knew Reconstruction would not be easy and created this plan to readmit um, states to the Union. By 1864, Louisiana, Louisiana, Tennessee, and Arkansas accepted the terms and they were federally occupied for most of the war anyway. Unfortunately, Lincoln was assassinated and we will never know um, what this plan would look like carried out because in steps Andrew Johnson, that vice president, Southerner that we talked about. We also have a newly appointed Congress in December 1865. Newly elected legislatures arrive in Washington. Nearly all were Democrats. Alexander Stevens was elected by Georgia, the former Confederate vice president. 58 others sat in the Confederate Congress, served in the Confederate cabinet. Four were Confederate generals, all of whom were pardoned by Johnson. What does pardon mean? Pardon means forgive, not have to go to jail, forgiven for crimes. Political drama, Johnson between 1865 and 1869. Johnson is a Democrat. Remember, Lincoln was a Republican, but he died shortly after winning re-election, giving Johnson the Democrat almost four years as president. Johnson stays in the U.S. Senate after Tennessee secedes. In a bid for re-election, he was deemed a good fit as he was a Southerner and a Democrat, and this showed inclusion by the Republicans. Johnson had a strong states' rights mentality and put a plan into place for Reconstruction. Reconstruction is not off to a great start. As a result, many Republicans 
win elections and take control in, Cong in Congress, including many radical Republicans. Lincoln wrote this plan regarding his reconstruction plan. So I want you to take a second to read it. And then you're going to talk to your table and say, ask what kind, what type of plan do you think he will propose? What are some qualities of this plan that he might propose? He says, with malice towards none, with charity for all, with firmness in the right, as God gives us to see the right, let us strive on to finish the work we are in, to bind up the nation's wounds, to care for him who shall have borne the battle, and for his widow, his orphan, to cherish to achieve and cherish a lasting peace among ourselves and with the world, to do all which we may achieve and cherish a just and lasting peace among ourselves and with the world. So here, it seems like he's talking about peaceful plan, a plan that includes justice, although some, when he says firmness in the right, perhaps some punishment to ensure that people understand their wrongdoing, but mostly a plan of justice and mercy. A radical Republican is a member of the Republican Party who is committed to equal treatment and enfranchisement of freed African-American people. Ulysses S. Grant is a radical Republican, and Johnson will end up vetoing 21 bills passed by Congress, and radicals override 15 of his vetoes. By 1867, 10 Southern states, all but Virginia, had radical Republicans. How did Southerners feel about embracing the Union? They say here, if nothing were necessary but to restore the machinery of government in terms of states, in rebellion, in point terms of form. The movements made to that end by the people of the South might be considered satisfactory. But if it is required that the Southern people should accommodate themselves to the results of the war in point terms of spirit, those moments fall far short of what must be insisted upon. Now, this is a quote that's going to be on your test. Take a second to read it. And the question asks, how did the Southerners feel about embracing the Union? So here, we can talk about how they are not very satisfied with how the plans look. They're not very excited to re-embrace the union. They simply think that it's something that must be done. We have several plans regarding what could happen to radical Republican, what, regarding how they can reincorporate the South into the union. We have Lincoln's 10% plan, Johnson's plan, and the radical Republicans plan. Lincoln's plan, the 10% plan, would say that as soon as 10% of a state's voters took a loyalty oath to the union, the state could set up a new government. Lincoln thinks that secession is constitutionally impossible. So the South never really left and individuals and not states rebel. Lincoln incorporates no guarantee of social or political equality for African-American people. He thinks that they should can pardon or forgive all military people who served for the Confederacy, except the high-ranking officers. And he thinks that we should make this as quick and easy as possible. So this plan does not address land for freed slaves or voting rights for them. And this plan was created before Lincoln's death because we know yesterday that he was assassinated. So this is what he was planning to incorporate if he had not been killed. 
the radical Republicans think that Congress should lead in Reconstruction. Lincoln's plan angered members of his own party who wanted to punish the South, as well as give full rights for African Americans. It was led by Thaddeus Stevens, who we did mention yesterday, and Charles Sumner. These radical Republicans in Congress insisted that the Confederates had committed high crimes. The radical Republicans passed the Wade Davis bill that required a majority of states' pre-war voters to swear loyalty to the Union, guarantees of African American equality and the right to vote, and a stricter plan for readmitting rebellious states. Lincoln vetoes this when it is passed. Therefore, Lincoln has passed away after he vetoed this plan, so his Vice President Johnson is not going to go with either plan. He becomes president after Lincoln's death, and he intends to follow the broad outline of Lincoln's plan. Johnson's plan includes states that states were to withdraw their secession, they were to swear allegiance to the Union, ratify the 13th Amendment, and draft a constitution that abolished slavery. Mississippi did not do this until 2013. He says white men alone must manage the South. What does Johnson mean by this quote? He did not want black people to have the right to vote. He supported states' rights over federal regulations. Radical Republicans that controlled Congress did not approve of Johnson's lack of support for African Americans' rights. Congress responded by expanding the Freedmen's Bureau to include punishing state officials who failed to extend civil rights to African Americans. Civil Rights Act of 1866, ending of black codes by creating a federal guarantee of civil rights to African-American people. Andrew Johnson would use his veto power to block these laws. Johnson was now openly defying Congress. He'll continue to battle Congress as Congress believed Johnson was working against reconstruction and overrode his veto. Congress did something unprecedented. With the required two-thirds majority, it passed major legislation over a president's veto. The Civil Rights Act of 1866 became law, even though Johnson vetoed it. Congress begins its reconstruction plan, but first they need to take care of something. President Johnson is impeached and the 14th Amendment is passed. This cartoon is called An Inflexible President of 1866. The Republican cartoon shows Johnson knocking the Freedmen's Bureau by his veto. I want you to take just a second, pick one of the three plans that we just covered, Lincoln, Stevens, or Johnson's plan, and summarize it here as review in your Pear Deck. So when Congress overturns Johnson's vetoes and enacts the Civil Rights Act of 1866 and the Freedmen's Bureau, Congress passed the 14th Amendment, which guaranteed equality under the law for all citizens. Congress passed the Reconstruction Act of 1867, which divided the 10 Southern states into five military districts governed by former Union generals. The South would be reconstructed under radical Republicans' plans. And we have the action occurring of Andrew Johnson being impeached. The impeachment process is the accusation of a public official of wrongdoing in office, bringing charges against the president. 
It involves two steps. The first step is when the House of Representatives holds hearings to decide if there are crimes committed. They then vote on charges, and if there is a majority, then charges are brought against the president. The second step occurs when the U.S. Senate becomes a courtroom. The president is tried for the charges brought against him. The chief justice of the Supreme Court is the judge. Once trial is completed, senators must vote to remove the president with a two-thirds vote. In Johnson's impeachment trial, they brought up 11 charges of high crimes and misdemeanors. Congress passed the Tenure in Office Act, which required that the president not fire any cabinet members without consulting Congress. He had fired Edwin Stanton without consulting Congress, and therefore, they argued that he, this was breaking the law. He missed being removed by, from office by one vote. Presidency would suffer as a result of the failed impeachment. President would become more of a figurehead. They save the separation of powers of the three branches of government. This is a painting of Johnson's impeachment trial. So this is Congress all listening in on the hearing. And we don't have to do this today. So there we go. I'm going to have an essay activity for you as well and a small exit ticket. But there we go on content for this Friday, October 7th. Hope you have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you soon.